similar to uh, the E pawns and the G pawns, we are also interested in knowing what are the exact application scenarios for the NG pawns. Of course, the NG pawns are extension to their predecessors. Naturally, their application areas are not going to be much different. However, the overall range of services and the application that these NG pawns are supposed to provide is going to be quite diverse. So we'd look at the access requirements and then we'd look at the scenarios which are created out of NGN pawn deployments. First of all, the next generation passive optical networks are supposed to carry voice like their predecessors, the Ethernet access both for the internet and other WAN requirements, TDM, the DSL traffic. It can also serve as the wireless backhaul because the traffic which is coming from wireless access points needs to be aggregated and then sent over the other side of the network. So the next generation pawns are supposed to provide a very flexible architecture that tailors to the requirements presented to it. Likewise, the bandwidth on each of these application scenarios should be tailored enough to meet the individual as well as the business needs. Let's look at the overall big picture first. Here we see from the right hand side, we have certain unique application scenarios for NGNs. That is, we have the fiber to the cell, fiber to the building, fiber to the office, fiber to the building again, fiber to the home, fiber to the cabinet, and fiber to the curb. We see some newer entities that we haven't seen before. For instance, the cell site backhauling unit. It is also known as, as we know, the ONU. We have additional units such as the MTU, the multi-tenancy unit. We have the multi-dwelling unit. We have the small business unit, single family unit. Now you see that these certain building blocks are meant to provide the connectivity for that particular application scenario. Otherwise, the availability of passive splitters in all of these scenarios essentially implies that we are implementing the passive optical networks. Then we have the OLTs and then we have the aggregation switch. First of all, as usual, fiber to the home. This can provide symmetric services as well as the asymmetric services. When it comes to asymmetry, the IP television, video on demand, the file download, upload, etc. all come under the asymmetric broadband services requirements. As far as the symmetry is concerned, we have email, online gaming, distance learning, file exchange between two peers, and certainly the plain old telephone systems because on either side, the presence of telephones and telephone exchanges can be required. Then we have fiber to the cell. Now you see the name is cell. Cell essentially means that it is going to cover the uh, site meant for certain mobile operators. So the in this case, the ONU is known as the cell site backhauling unit. It is just a terminology that is attributed for ONU for this particular scenario. The connectivity to the base stations here for these for each of the mobile network operators is going to ensure that the overall aggregated traffic for each of the telecom service providers is carried over these optical passive optical networks this could include the broadband services for 2g which is tdm based 3g and 4g these cell site backhauling units can as such serve as hotspot themselves that is they can provide Wi-Fi hotspot based connectivity to the subscribers directly. So you see that the fiber to the cell is yet another form of the pawn application. Then we have fiber to the cabinet and fiber to the curb. Certainly it is not much different from fiber to the home scenario. The only thing additional here is that it can serve as the backhaul traffic aggregator for the DSL services. Because as we said earlier, 
the passive optical networks are supposed to provide backward compatibility to the traditional services such as telephony and DSL as well. Once again, we look at it here. Let's recall we have seen the fiber to the cell and we have seen fiber to the home, fiber to the cabinet and the curb. Let's move on to the scenario which is related to the building. Fiber to the building essentially implies a building that is for customers which are related to business or the residents such as people living in an apartment or on a, in a certain flat. For people residing, we have the multi-dwelling unit that is a kind of ONU that aggregates the traffic for all of these users either for symmetric and asymmetric services and telephone line which is the plain old telephone system. Fiber to the building can also be provided to certain expos and certain commercial buildings for uh, providing business related services which are mostly symmetric. The business users can also require the private lines which are high data rate, multi rate, bit rate lines which require the users to define what is their business requirement. So this particular scenario is meant for enterprises and large scale corporates. Then we have fiber to the office. Uh, we may have a scenario where we do not have an expo center or a large scale corporate office, but we have a small scale office. So we can have an ONU which is dedicated to providing all the services which are for the multi-dwelling and multi-tenant units to the um, offices as well. So it means that the ONU here is going to be of a smaller scale.